listening to the Mobcast Network. We've done this uh, before with Quick and the Dead, and I, I mentioned uh, any time that I could find a Siskel and Ebert episode that covers one of the movies we do, I would share it because we talked about. I'm fascinated by these two guys. These guys were so important to me growing up, and so I just want to share this with other people. So I have the actual review for Signs of the Lambs. Yeah. As we, as we know, it, there's two guys, and they they. Mm-hmm. They review the movie, and they either give it thumbs up or thumbs down. So before we watch the review, mm-hmm. I want to know. Um, what I'm, I'm going to s- say thumbs so, up. So Sis- Siskel is the skinny guy, well, mm-hmm. which is the heavier guy. So you think they both give him thumbs I up? I think they both give thumbs up. Bo- both thumbs up. With my brief knowledge of them. Mm-hmm. Kayla, what do you think? Uh, I think it's going to be split. Um, Because I feel like... I forget. I think Siskel's not going to like it. Ebert likes it, Siskel, thumbs down. Yeah. All right, here we go. Where a young woman is held captive and terrorized in a well. The horrors of female abuse are too much with us, I think, now to be trifled with any more in the movies. We had this complaint about... Uh, the picture involving Julia Roberts, I have it again here. I didn't learn a thing about serial killers from this movie. A much more honest, less exploitive film on the same subject was last year's Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. By contrast, The Silence of the Lambs is a star-studded freak show directed by the usually enormously talented Jonathan Demme, who I think for the first time in his career has picked a surprisingly trashy project. Well. This is a tough film to review because, of course, in terms of its subject matter, one can easily target it as you have. And also, I think that the ending doesn't really work. Once she gets into the house of Buffalo Bill, it does become a standard who's behind this door, who's going to jump on me from the shadows. The first part of this film, though, Gene, is terrifically effective, partially because of the real tension, the dynamic interaction between Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins. It's one of the most peculiar and fascinating relationships I've seen in a movie in a long time. Hopkins is very good here. Foster is very good here. The dialogue is at a very high level of intelligence, and the movie works not perhaps in the same way as Henry Porter of a Serial Killer, but effectively. And I think that you're really shortchanging a lot of skill and craft and art that went into this film. You know, sometimes you say, I think you blew it on this one. I think think you're being too easy on this picture in in this way. (laughs) He is presented, uh, the Anthony Hopkins character, is presented as this big evil thing, and we're going our, go, going down there to see them, a, a journey into hell and all that. And frankly, he, he was so pumped up, and the music was so pumped up at such a high level it that I... It worked thought, for me. It uh, worked. Well, then you're easy, because, I, because for me, I thought, oh, come on. Uh, a guy who's truly frightening doesn't need... Uh, you know, a, a huge organ playing in the background. I, I didn't buy it at Gene, all. This is the movies. What did you want? A documentary, <laughs> black and white, you know television, shoot it on no, video. The thing? reason why Henry the Portrait of a Serial, serial Killer works is because these people, my intuition, I don't have any first hand knowledge, these people tend to be kind of dull. Well, they're two different kinds of movies, and you're using one to criticize the other. Yes, we of, always do that, Roger. We why, say better picture than the same you criticize this on its own terms instead of saying I'm what criticizing it is. on its own terms. I didn't, uh, wasn't compelled by anybody except. I suppose the Jodie Foster character as a strong woman. Come on, a great performance. Not a great performance, a decent performance. She's Anthony following... po- Hopkins. No, great... I thought that was way overplayed. They... I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Caleb's right. Siskel doesn't like the movie Ebert does. Um, well, for Siskel's a th- dick. This, this one's kind of famous uh, because Ebert, for years afterwards, until Siskel's death, would hound him about how wrong he was about Signs of Lambs because, as we know, it goes on and wins... Lots of things. All, yeah. all the awards. Like, he says Jodie Foster's performance was okay. Yeah. It wins Best Actress. And then he discounts as Anthony Hopkins at the end of the uh, interview the review at all. He's famously, like, hates this movie. Yeah. And thought it was terrible. And, 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 and so I got curious. And while Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer is fondly remembered. It's, it's, and a good movie. It's just, it does, nobody, like, if I were to bring that film up versus Silence of the Lambs, one of those is going to get discussed right, right, more. Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. More people have seen, have seen Silence of the Lambs, so, 